So I went to One Dog and One Cat Cafe in Newcastle to find out which one is actually better. I feel like these dog and cat cafes have been popping up everywhere. It's definitely a massive thing in Newcastle. There's probably about, I'd say around 10 in the whole city and most of them are in the city centre. So I went to the dog cafe first. That was called Dog and Scone. And before you start, put your knives and pitchforks down, okay? Because you can't say dog and scone. The thing about Dog and Scone, one of the good things about it is that it's really easy to book online, but at the same time, there was something that was a little bit confusing. The entry fee for your booking is £6 per person, but you have to pay a £2 deposit per person online before you get there, so that leaves £4 on the day just to get into the cafe. Maybe if I was less dense that would make a bit more sense to me it made it a lot more complicated when we were trying to like, work out how much it would cost for each person i don't understand why part of the entrance fee was paid before and then part of it is paid in person once you're actually there all of the staff are really friendly you do have to wait outside until the booking before is finished so once you get there you'll be asked to take your shoes off I feel like some people might be uncomfortable with that. I wasn't, I didn't mind. If I was recommending it, it's definitely something that I would mention. I think there are about like six, like seven or eight dogs probably there. And they're all really small ones, which I was not disappointed by because it makes sense. You can't have like 15 Great Danes running around a shop. There was a miniature dash on there called Noodle. Noodle. Like, that's the best thing I've ever heard. It's a really relaxed sort of environment because they just kind of let the dogs do their own thing. The menu kind of confused me a little bit. I'll start with the pros. All of the options were really simple, standard, can't go wrong lunch things like toasties and wraps and things like that. It's not over complicated in any way. I think a lot of the time, cafes especially, that brand themselves on being trendy and Instagrammable, and stuff like that. That's such a cringy word, but what are you gonna do? Their menu is usually really overcomplicated and it's like baked fettuccine cooked in camembert, lavender. And I'm just like, what does, I just want some nice food. So you're going in there to have a nice meal and have a good time. That point was definitely executed. At the same time, the menu was definitely a bit contradictory. It just didn't match what the rest of the cafe felt like. So I got a wrap. I got a chicken mayo wrap with mozzarella in it and it was really, really nice. But when it was brought out, compared to the interior of the cafe is so nice. When they bring you out food that just doesn't match that, it just feels really contradictory and I was a bit confused by it. All of the wraps and all of the toasties are served with crisps on the side. So I got this wrap, it was really nice, but on a plate with just a wrap and about seven crisps, it was a bit of a depressing sight. Like the food was actually really nice, the service was pretty quick, but I just think the presentation of it just looked like something I could make. And I'm a 19 year old who is scared of cooking meat because I'll probably get it wrong. What I thought they did do really well was the drinks. As someone who goes to cafes all of the time, something that I always look for is more variety in their drinks because everyone's gonna have a latte, everyone's gonna have a cup of tea. For me, it's more about what sets it apart from other places. My friend ordered a hot chocolate um, just plain, not even, no marshmallows. I don't, I, I don't know what she was doing. Why would you get a hot chocolate without any marshmallows? It had their logo in chocolate on top of it, sort of like printed on top of it. It was just a normal hot chocolate, but they've done something to sort of set themselves apart from all of the other places just making a nice hot chocolate. They also had some like speciality drinks. So I got a white chocolate caramel milkshake, which was absolutely unbelievable. It was really cheap as well. I'd say just overall the atmosphere is really nice in there. It's really calming. All of the staff are really friendly. There was one dog that was just an absolute massive diva and I was so here for it. I was like, princess treatment, that's what it deserves. But there's others that will just sit and chill and if they want to come up to you, they'll come up to you. If they don't, they don't. None of the staff are going to force them to interact with you. I'd say as a student, it's a really good 
sober activity. I'd 100% recommend Dog and Scone. You can have some nice food and pet some cute dogs. Literally what can possibly go wrong. Moving on to the cat cafe. Mug on the Tyne, which is the name of the cat cafe. If we're gonna compare the names, I think Mog on the Tyne's got the edge. Shoot me. It's next door to Dog and Scone. The booking is basically exactly the same. It's the exact same price. It's six pounds. Mog on the Tyne was, you just pay the six pounds online, which to me makes more sense than a two pound deposit and then paying four pounds in person. Same rules apply. You have to take your shoes off when you walk in. Very, very different in the, just the overall atmosphere was a little bit better, but because the cats are constantly moving around and jumping everywhere, and most of the dogs in Dog and Scone, at least when I was there, were just, you know, like sat chilling. So when you walk past Dog and Scone, you can't see any dogs in there, really, because they're all a bit further back. Whereas when you walk past Mog on the Tyne, you can see loads of cats in there. It just looks better walking past and actually being able to see the animals. Because when you walk past Dog and Scone, you can't see dogs running around and having fun. You can see that in Mog on the Tyne. And I feel like that made a big difference. The layout in the cat cafe was really cool because they had, you know, big things that cats climb on everywhere. By putting all of these things that cats are made to play with and climb on, it just felt a lot more active and the energy was a bit more enthusiastic in there. The menu, I will say, in Mog on the Tyne, I don't think was as varied as it was in Dog and Scone. In Mog on the Tyne, they just had some paninis, uh, some brownies, some scones, scones, don't. Menus were pretty similar. If I had to choose one, it would probably be the dog and scone menu just because there's more variation, even though it doesn't look as nice. There's just more options there. I think another good thing about both of them is that they're both really affordable. Nearly all of the menu options for both of them were around a fiver. Overall, they're obviously very similar because it's the exact same concept it's just done with a different animal but i personally had a better experience at mog on the time 